Right everyone, welcome back. Um, this is going to be part two of the build of this particular cabinet. This is the SBC 100 um, and in the previous video that I did I just gave a quick rundown and showed the sort of finishes that you could get out of these cabinets. Now this has no pump in it. Um, so far there have been no modifications to the cabinet. I haven't had to drill any extra ports. Um, it's been pretty much as you'd get it um, brand new from the shop. So today's video uh, at part two in this sort of mini series is on lighting. Um, now the original light that you'll see running in there, I'll just flick it off to give you an idea of what it looks like when it's not on at all. So it's a little dark in there, so I mean it does kind of work. Um, but the issue with this is it's still very dull and as soon as the mist builds up, uh, you practically cannot see it all. So getting decent light inside these cabinets is absolutely crucial. Uh, in order to be able to blast effectively in it. Um, you really need to see what you're doing, uh, especially when the cabinets are a lot slower than the, the industrial ones or, or even the, the well-built, uh, home-built cabinets. Um, but you really, really need good light in these. So this video is just going to give a quick rundown of how I've done it. Now, this isn't the only way. I just find this way to be quite convenient. Um, now in the past I have gotten away of just literally duct taping strip light and lighting up and down um, the sides. Um, but this way I, I like to make it look a little bit tidier um, and also reproducible. So um, firstly I'm going to show the difference and then I'm going to give a quick rundown on how I did this. So as you can see there are a few 3D printed uh, components on this. I'll make those available at a later date. Um, but for now, I just want to give a quick demonstration um, as to how much better um, the lighting is when you have um, this, this type of strip lighting in there. So I'm just going to jerry-rig this up so you can kind of see the difference, and then I'll actually change it over and remove the other light. So uh, just attach those. There we go. So you can definitely see an improvement there. Um, and you'll notice even more so when you're actually using it. So if I just uh, remove this so you can see what it's like without that part at all. Just attach that there. So there we go. So that's how it looks without the other light on. Um, just to show the other light isn't actually doing any, any additional work. But um, it makes it a lot easier to see. Um, and, and from coming from the multiple different angles rather than just the top there, um, it makes it a lot easier to see um, more parts of cast less shadows and you can see where dark patches are. Um, so that's the difference. Um, I'm going to go set up over on the bench there in a second and just show you how I've done this. Um, this isn't the only way you can do it. Like I mentioned, you can just take the strip lighting straight to the top of the glass. Um, but... If I want to change this later or if I want to put it on something else, um, it's a lot easier to do this way. Uh, it's a little bit more modular um, and I just prefer it this way. So um, you don't have to do it the same as I do, but I will be making this method available. Um, the files for these, um, provided I can find that this type of aluminium extrusion is relatively common, I'll make these available. Otherwise, I might try and look into finding something that is a little bit more available uh, around the world and I'll redesign it to suit that extrusion instead um, but for now this is what we're going to run with this is what I'm using for the demonstration um, and we'll just go set up on the other bench over there so you can see exactly how I've done it right so this is the extrusion bracket um, as you can see it's just made up of the four corner brackets uh, they're actually just two different designs um, flipped so they're, they're all symmetrical, you just um, flip them over two designs, that'll give you your four corners. And then in here is just the extrusion, so I don't know how well you can see that. It's just a simple um, slider track uh, from closet doors, and I actually had this sitting on the roof. Um, so I just cut it up into the right lengths, printed out the uh, four corners, and, um, and put it all together. So as you can see in the corners there, there are, there are holes as part of a 3D print. And that is so you can get wires out, regardless of what, what corner you want to put them in. So makes it easier. I only have to do two designs um, and then fit it into place. And makes it much easier for the wiring. Now, um, you want to try and keep 
the light quite close to the glass. Um, if you have them too deep, particularly in channel, it'll actually cut the field of view of the light and you can end up with dark patches inside the cabinet. So what I did uh, in this particular case was I just uh, cut this, um, uh, this foam tape um, to the right width, stuck that in first, and then most of these LED strips you get have a, um, a sticky backing tape on it. So it's just uh, the foam tape in first and then that. So it actually makes it a little bit easier to get it to stick properly. Um, in the past I have had issues. If you try and get this light to stick directly into something, um, usually it'll peel off quite quickly. The adhesive isn't that great on them. Um, so by using the foam, uh, the sticky backed foam tape first, first of all it'll bring it closer and increase the field of view on, on the lights to reduce any dark patches in the cabinet. Um, but it also helps it to stick easier. Now they're pretty easy to wire. Um, you can see I've just got in the design of these um, 3D printed uh, joiners um, there's a big enough cavity on the inside of them to feed the wires through without too much trouble. So that makes it really, really simple. It's uh, quite a strong way of doing things. And then to attach it to the cabinet, it fits in place quite well as it is. Um, but then I'll just use more double-sided tape uh, in the, on these tabs here that stick out onto the side there. Um, as long as you cut your links right for um, the, the extrusion, um, it should fit all right and the side locking tabs should still work properly. Um, so really, really simple way of doing it, and as you've seen uh, in the demonstration, it works quite effectively. Um, so I will be changing this out. I do have a spare one in plastic from the larger cabinets. Um, I just want a little bit of extra room in there. It's not much, but um, just the way the corners are make it just a little nicer to work with. And being plastic as well, it's easier um, for drilling additional holes in there to get um, more wires in and out. Um, it's still fine to do with the, the steel ones, it's just a lot easier to work with the plastic and I don't want to spend too much time on this project so um, since I've got it it's just a much quicker way of doing it. So um, that's what I'll be doing on this cabinet. It doesn't mean you can't do it with a steel one. Steel one you can, it just means it's going to take a little bit longer um, as I mentioned the plastic's easier to work with. Um, so that's it for the lighting. Uh, next time I'll either cover off the ventilation uh, on the inside there. Um, and I might throw in something else. I, I want to change the gloves out. I'll show you which gloves to use um, But this lighting method uh, won't only work on these cabinets. You can use them on the larger ones um, You'll need to design up your brackets uh, For them though, these ones won't work. Um, in fact, I might actually do that in future I will design up some brackets that will screw into uh, those plastic type um, surrounds, window surrounds on the larger cabinets that you see a lot of people converting um, but for now I have this designed for the SBC 100s and like I mentioned I will make them available uh, at a later date. Um, so this one's been a relatively short one, um, I just want to cover off lights in this one as I mentioned we'll start covering off a few of the other things in future videos but um, by breaking them up like this it makes it a little easier on me, I can just do a little bit here and there and it doesn't interrupt my work procedures uh, as it would be if I tried to sit down and do everything at once. Um, so as always, uh, thanks for watching. If you like, share, subscribe, um, particularly for this one because I will be dragging these videos out. So if you subscribed and you are building one of these little SBC 100s or if you've got it sitting in the back of the shop, um, you'll get updated when the uh, following videos come out. Um, and I'll probably end up putting them into a playlist as well. Um, so you can just sit down and watch them all at once and um, <clears throat> so far it's been a very easy conversion so as I mentioned thanks for watching